How about a wireless robotic lawnmower that not only operates without an annoying boundary wire, mows in parallel paths, and possesses precise obstacle detection, but also costs less than $1,000 to purchase? Something like that doesn't exist? Well, it does now as of late. Segway i105 and i108e's new lawn robots promise us exactly that and more. What these two new models are all about, how they perform in practice, and whether investing in them is worthwhile, or if one should steer clear, we'll thoroughly examine in today's video. I hope you're as excited as I am, so let's get started right away. But if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this channel now and activate the bell to never miss a video again. You can find the current prices of the robots to support this channel in the video description below. Thank you for your support, and let's get started. The manufacturer, whom most of us, including myself, probably know more from their self-balancing vehicles that you can stand on, released two new robots at the beginning of this year, the Navimo i105 and i108e. The devices of the so-called i-series are not only intended to score points with many first-class features, but also to convince with a moderate price tag. Let's now see what these devices are really capable of. Starting with the contents of the package, it should be mentioned that it's completely identical for both models. The only thing that varies is the robot itself. As we're accustomed to from other GPS robotic mowers already tested, the scope of delivery is quite generous in this case as well. And as one can see, the lawn robot is securely stored in the middle of the box. Surrounding it is the small-scale accessories in a separate box, as well as the user manual and, lastly, the charging station. So everything necessary is included to put the robot into operation directly. I suggest we take a brief look at the most important installation steps below to keep the video concise. For those interested, the detailed video with a step-by-step -step guide for setting up and installing the lawnmower can be found here in the upper right corner of the card or on my channel. The first and most crucial step is to find a suitable location for the station. As with all other GPS robotic mowers, it's important to ensure that the reception of the station and the GNSS antennas are not obstructed by tall trees or buildings. In this regard, a distance of at least 2 meters from the objects and a clear view of the sky are essential to ensure a stable satellite connection, ideally even a bit more. Similarly, the antenna must not be placed under overhangs or similar structures. The practical aspect, for checking the suitability of the position, Segway offers a feature called Satellite Signal Analyzer in the app. This allows us to check from our mobile phones if the robot and the antenna can receive enough satellites in common. Once we've found the perfect position for our new robotic mowers, we can securely anchor the charging station to the ground and set up the antenna or GNSS station. Finally, only the wiring remains, which is also not spectacular, as it involves only two cables that need to be attached to the station. And that's it. Now we can push the lawnmower into the station for charging and focus on setting it up from the app. For setting up the lawnmower, we inevitably need the Navimo app. This is available for free on both Android and iOS and requires registration after download so that we can connect to the robot. If the mower hasn't been powered up until now, we need to turn it on, of course. Once we've done that, we activate Bluetooth on the mobile device and click on Add Device. Then, the lawnmower standing in front of us appears on the screen, so we can connect it to our Wi-Fi network. Important to mention, currently, the mower only has a 2.4 GHz interface, so connection to the faster 5 GHz band is not possible. Shortly after, as can be seen, the Navimo has already connected without difficulties to my 2.4 GHz. Problems often occur with cheaper models, and begins downloading the current software. Depending on the strength of the Wi-Fi connection in the garden, this can take several minutes. In the meantime, the lawnmower also restarts several times. 
Once all messages disappear from the display and the LED ring on the robot blinks green, it's ready for the final step, mapping. On the whole, I can say the process is actually identical to all other GPS robotic mowers already tested, just a bit cooler. In the app, we're prompted to create our first zone, after which two small joysticks appear on the smartphone display, allowing us to control the robot through our garden. The precise control of the robot, similar to a small remote-controlled car, is truly extremely simple. If you were allowed to play with an RC car as a child, it's even easier. Otherwise, of course, you can simply take a few test drives before starting the mapping process. Once you feel confident, it's time to drive around the boundaries of the lawn area with the robot and save them. If you're not happy with the boundaries, it's good to go over them again, as the precision of the robot's navigation along the boundaries depends on our previous mapping. I also find the approach of how the Navimo handles correction of mapping extremely ingenious. If I've gone off track or perhaps was too fast and didn't get the curve right, I can easily undo this without having to completely remap the area. By holding down the button with the eraser symbol, the lawnmower slowly returns along the mapped path to the spot where I want to make adjustments. Once we've completely outlined the area, the robot automatically recognizes the station and I can finish the mapping or add additional zones such as no-go areas, connecting paths between two zones or similar. We'll take a closer look at how well this all works in just a moment. Okay, and with that, we're done. The robot is now fully operational and configured to start mowing. Let's find out how well it performs in this regard and what it has to offer. Let's start with a few words about its appearance. The robot comes in a surprisingly compact plastic chassis, which not only looks modern and high quality, but is also very robust. Especially when lifting the robot, you don't immediately feel like parts of the chassis are going to break off. Additionally, the robot has two handles on the underside to facilitate transport. Whether it's the I-105 or the I-108, both devices weigh 10.9 kilograms, which, as you can see in the graphic, is in the good middle range compared to other models already tested, or, in other words, definitely not too heavy. To ensure good balance, the robot, like most other devices, has two steering wheels. The drive wheels, on the other hand, are located at the front and boast a particularly large diameter of 240 millimeters. In practice, this provides the great advantage that smaller unevenness in the lawn are no longer a problem for the Navimo because not everyone has a golf course at home. Due to the fact that the drive wheels are located at the front, the Navimo is not a climbing king like, for example, the Luba, the video of which is here in the upper right corner, but it can still handle inclines of up to 30%. Compared to other devices, as you can see, this is nothing special, but in my opinion, it should be completely sufficient for most normal gardens. Speaking of average gardens, the maximum area coverage also aims more towards the middle range. This is, in fact, besides the built-in battery, the only difference between the two models I-105 and I-108. With 500 and 800 square meters, respectively, the devices are aimed at small to medium-sized gardens and are as visible in the middle range compared to others. The built-in battery, especially in the case of the i-105 with 55 watt-hours, is in my opinion quite small, as the graphic nicely illustrates. In practice, the small mower achieves an average runtime of less than an hour before returning to the charging station. Thus, to cover the stated 500 square meters, it has to undergo several charging cycles. The larger 108 model, on the other hand, has a battery twice as large with 110 watt-hours and also allows for double the runtime. The positive aspect is that, due to systematic mowing, the Navimo is, compared to a random mowing mower, naturally much faster and more efficient. Through the ability of satellite positioning of the mower in conjunction with GNSS, the device achieves positioning accurate to a few centimeters in practice, provided enough satellites are available. At this point, the new I-Series has a practical ace up its sleeve. 
In addition to satellite positioning, the robot also has a built-in camera on the front. This is not only used for obstacle detection, which we'll critically examine shortly, but also for orientation. VSLAM, or Visual Simultaneous Localization and Mapping, is the principle in which the camera scans structures and objects in the environment and links them to the map. This brings the enormous advantage that even if there are not enough satellites for accurate positioning, the mower can still navigate without difficulty. This is the case, for example, when the mower is located under large trees. In practice, I can say there's thus double security, that the lawnmower does not accidentally land in the flower bed or regularly stops under large trees due to signal loss. It not only enables a consistently good parallel path, but also precise mowing of the boundaries. Regarding this important feature of the cut-to-edge function, I can say that the lawnmower fundamentally has two options, edge-close and edgeless mowing. Already, during mapping, it's crucial that we tell the lawnmower where it's allowed to drive along the lawn edge and where not. This can easily be activated or deactivated in the app with the push of a button. To identify the exact overlap area, I conducted several measurements with 0, 50, and 100%. 0 means that the robotic lawnmower drives along the boundary of the lawn area, 50 partially on the lawn and partially on the boundary, and 100% completely on the boundary. By default, at 0%, I found that the lawnmower leaves a distance of about 20 to 30 centimeters to the boundary of the lawn area. This ensures, in practice, that it does not inadvertently scrape along protruding lawn edges or similar. On the other hand, edgeless mowing. At 50%, as you can see, the robot moves about 30 centimeters over the lawn area onto the boundary, thus mowing the area already without edges. The same applies to 100%, where the device drives almost completely with approximately 60 centimeters onto the boundary. The result is the same. The area is mowed without edges. Therefore, it's sufficient during mapping to let the robot drive onto the paved area by 50%. This is easiest done by walking directly behind the robot and using the centrally positioned camera as a crosshair for precise targeting of the edge of the area. Thus, it's one of the few that has perfected this feature, and manual mowing along the edge of the area is thus a thing of the past to the delight of the user. Everyone who owns more than a large lawn area should also be happy with the Navimo, as it offers an easy way to manage multiple zones effortlessly, similar to the Luba. Due to the, in my opinion, very simple representation in the app, it is possible without much effort to add additional zones and create connections between them. Because, after all, we also have to tell the robot how to get from zone A to zone B. The passage width of the connecting paths must not be less than one meter, by the way. In the same vein of zone creation, we can also create restricted areas that the robot must not enter, such as open flower beds. Due to the already mentioned double security of VSLAM technology, these are also definitely safe from the robot's inadvertent mowing. As a result, we now come to another very important characteristic of a lawnmower, namely obstacle detection. The Navamo does not rely on ultrasonic sensors, as already mentioned, but instead uses the built-in camera for obstacle detection. However, in practice, this means that ground-level paving slabs or large bare patches are also recognized as obstacles and are normally avoided by the robot. It simply maneuvers around them. In this case, it's important that we inform the robot to deactivate the camera, or rather, the obstacle detection in these areas. This is done through so-called vision fence zones, which we can create in the app just like restricted areas, always hoping that there are no real obstacles there. From my practical experience, I can say that obstacle detection actually works quite reliably, at least for larger objects like garden furniture, flower pots, and the like. All these objects are easily recognized by the device and safely avoided. However, with smaller objects that may also be quite flat, it's a bit different. 
In my tests, I couldn't achieve as good a detection rate as before in these cases. I tested this on various objects such as children's toys, garden tools, and even a fake hedgehog. As you can see in the video, the robot partly recognized and avoided the obstacles safely, but sometimes it showed no reaction and simply ran over them. Personally, I would argue that the obstacle detection software still needs some fine-tuning to reliably detect smaller objects in the future. Until then, I would recommend minimizing obstacles in the robot's path as much as possible and only operating the device during daylight hours to avoid harming either the robot or small animals. So, I would say let's move on to the conclusion. All in all, I must say that the new Navimo from Segway really impressed me positively, as the device delivers very good results in many areas. The software runs smoothly, and the array of features the device possesses pays off in practice. Setting up different zones, managing the schedule, basically the entire interaction with the software is super easy, and there's nothing to complain about regarding the quality of the lawn cutting. At less than 60 decibels, the robot is quieter than all other models tested so far and is also IP66 certified, allowing the device to be easily cleaned with a garden hose. The only area where I think some improvement is still needed is obstacle detection. The software could be a bit more precise in this regard. Therefore, in my opinion, the device is recommended for anyone who owns a small to medium-sized garden and does not want to bother with laying annoying boundary wires anymore. After correctly setting up the robot, we can relax without worry and let the new Navimo do our work. Okay, that's it from my side, so now it's your turn. What do you think of this new GPS lawnmower from Segway? Feel free to share your opinion, maybe even your experience, in the comments below. I look forward to your feedback. If you enjoyed the video, please show your support with a thumbs up to help out my channel. You can find the current prices of the robot in the video description below. Thank you for your support and stay healthy until next time. Goodbye.